the PR and I'm Joanna H. So this is going to be the last in a series and the last, I had to say the best to last basically because this is actually a dessert and not a main meal. And I have to say, sticky toffee pudding is like my ultimate favourite dessert. Like, it's kind of hard because I love dessert in general, so there's a lot of contenders, but sticky toffee pudding, warm, with some nice ice cream, it just does something to me. Like, it's just so amazing, I've always loved it. So anyway, a few years ago, when I first started my plant-based journey, I was looking for people online that I could, um, that I can watch and learn how to cook plant-based meals from. Initially because, um, when you're transitioning from eating like a junk food, like normal diet, you would say, to a more healthier lifestyle or healthier plant-based lifestyle, it is quite difficult making that transition because really and truly everything tastes quite bland. Um, it's like you, you're so used to all of these artificial flavours and artificial colourings and everything. So when you start eating um, healthy, you start eating well, sometimes everything can be a bit like, oh, where's the flavour? But let me tell you, one thing I've learned is that the flavour comes from the herbs and spices that you put into your food. It doesn't matter whether it's a dessert, whether it's a main meal, breakfast, you need herbs and spices and that's what will really bring up the flavour that you're looking for. And when I first started um, my journey, the people that I, was that I was following in regards to eczema healing, the kind of recipes that they kind of, that they showed or recommended weren't really for me because um, of the background that I have, the kind of food that I'm used to, especially in my culture, and besides the whole sugar and sweeteners, etc., I did find all of the food that they were showing me how to cook quite boring. So, um, yeah, as I said, I started to look at different people, um, different YouTubers that were putting out plant-based recipes that I could actually get down with and actually enjoy. And one of those people was Rachel Amma, like, she's amazing and it's so crazy because when I first started watching her channel it was like she literally just started it and she's blown up like incredibly she's amazing but anyway one of the first recipes that she put up was um, a sticky toffee pudding recipe and even though I wanted to try it and and enjoy it the way she'd um, she'd shown us how to do it I wasn't um, eating quite a few of the things that she was putting in the video so I had to find a way to make the recipe and swap out the things that I didn't want to eat which is what I'm going to show you in this video so um, in her video she uses vegan butter and I don't use vegan butter I never have and probably never will not probably I never will um, because a lot of vegan butters especially and margarines in general use a really high amount of rapeseed oil and rapeseed and canola oil is not a healthy oil for you to consume whether you've got eczema or not rapeseed oil is very very inflammatory and causes a lot of damage to your gut and intestinal intestinal organs but anyway that's a different video so i don't use vegan butter so i had to sort that out and i used um apple apple puree instead now it's crazy because a lot of the things that we kind of assume that we're going to swap things out for are not quite the same but i found that apple puree or pureed apples give the same kind of texture that you would get from a vegan bar so that's what i swapped that out with i also use um gluten-free oat flour in this recipe but if you if you're if you're on the kind of journey that I'm on now where I'm cutting out grains from my diet. Again, like I said, I recorded this months ago, so I wasn't doing that at the time. But today, if I was gonna make this recipe today, I would swap out the oat flour for teff flour, which is, um, it's another kind of grain type flour, but it's 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 naturally gluten-free, it's high in fibre, high in iron, and it doesn't have the same um, inflammatory effects as maybe oats or any other gluten-free flours. So teff is definitely one to try. And if you're gonna make this recipe, I will probably use about one and a half cups of teff rather than two cups because I've cooked with it before or baked with it before and it's a really dense type flour so I feel like you need less. Um, and the other thing is just swapping out like normal sugar or brown sugar and using coconut sugar instead. Um, but yeah, this recipe is amazing. She actually smashed it. And I really hope that you guys find this helpful. Um, in terms of like eating it on a regular basis, I don't. I probably make sticky toffee pudding like once every, I don't know, six months or something for special occasions. But um, the things that I've used in this video, you definitely use it for like your baking in general. Um, as I said, just because you're on an eczema journey or just because you're trying to eat healthy doesn't mean that you can't enjoy certain foods. Um, but just everything in moderation, do you get what I mean? Don't be too hard on yourself, don't be too strict on yourself. When you fancy a dessert, get into the kitchen and make it yourself. Get, in, get creative, try and find ways of um, enjoying your food without messing up your diet. And that was the reason why I decided to start this Eats for Eczema series. If you guys have enjoyed the series 
um, and you want me to do more of these videos make sure you leave a comment below make sure you like this video and also subscribe to my channel um, also you can follow me on Instagram I'll put the link up here or up here and um, I do regular polls on my Instagram so I can find out from people what they want um, what they would find helpful in their own like eczema healing journey or just general well-being um, and you can let me know what recipes you want to see I've literally got like a whole appertoire but sometimes I just get so ahead of myself I don't even know what to do first so it's better to ask you guys um, what you want to see but yeah I really hope you enjoyed the series um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! So these are the dates that I usually use and these are Waitrose Organic and these ones still have the pips inside them so even though it might seem a little bit time consuming I prefer to buy these because the dates are a lot softer. I find that when I use dates that are already pitted they're very dry so you want 200 grams worth of dates and this is roughly 12 dates all together and you're going to chop these up into small pieces. So once you've finished chopping you're going to add all of these to your saucepan and then you're going to measure out any plant based milk that you want, um, one and a half cups of milk. If you look closely you can see I've changed the cup size because it is one and a half. So you're going to add these to the cooker and you're going to wait until it boils and as you're stirring you'll notice that the dates are going to collapse and start to infuse with the milk. Once this is all combined you can take it off the fire and then you're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda and then you'll see that it starts to kind of bubble up a little bit and then you're going to add a further tablespoon of lemon juice or apple cider vinegar whichever is up to you, I prefer lemon juice and then you're going to add this and this is going to further make it bubble up and this is what gives the cake like it's kind of like sponginess. Now I have to admit that since I changed the recipe to not use um, conventional wheat flour, I haven't been able to get that same sponginess that I got from that flour but it is great tasting anyway so just use whatever flour you prefer. So at this point you're going to add about 200 grams of flour and if you're um, an eat for eczema watcher then I would suggest that you use teff flour instead of oat flour or any other type of flour and make sure that it's gluten free. Now this is the key detail here and this is what is going to give your cake the flavour. You're going to add half a teaspoon of allspice, half a teaspoon of ginger and then one teaspoon of cinnamon and then a pinch of salt. Combine the flour and all of your different seasonings together and then you're going to put this to one side. Now as I said earlier in the video, to replace the margarine or the vegan butter, I use apple puree but the trick is to use half of whatever the measurement is for butter for your apple puree. So here I've used 57.5 grams, don't mind if you go slightly over. Then you're going to add a quarter cup of maple syrup, as you can see my maple syrup didn't make it, um, but it's fine, it doesn't matter. When your apple puree and your maple syrup is all combined then you're going to take your previous mix of dates and um, almond milk into this mixture and you're going to make sure that this is fully combined as well. Then you're going to go ahead and add this mixture into your flour mixture before and then you're going to use a spoon and make sure that all this is fully combined as well. Then you're going to pour your full mixture into a flat dish. I prefer to do it in a flat dish because I feel like it cooks a lot quicker and reminds me more of what sticky toffee pudding looks like. Then you're going to place this in the oven at 180 degrees for about 40 minutes and when it's ready then you can take it out. Now we're going to make the toffee part of the pudding and again because we're not using vegan butter we're going to use apple puree again and this measurement is going to be 75 grams. Then you're going to add 200 grams of organic coconut sugar to this mix as well and then you can put it on the fire again. So I'm just mixing all of the apple puree and sugar together and then once it's completely combined and it's nice and smooth then you're going to add 100ml of coconut cream, organic coconut cream 
um, to this mixture and that's what I measured out a bit earlier. And then you're gonna mix this again until it's completely combined. It is so amazing. Try not to eat it while you're doing this as well. So approximately 40 minutes later, your cake should be completely ready. You're gonna take it out of the oven and what you're gonna do is you're gonna use a, well I use a chopstick, and you're gonna poke holes into the cake. So when you pour your toffee mixture on top of it, it sinks deep into the cake all the way through. And then you're gonna use a spoon, make sure it's all smoothened out, and then leave it to sit for about 10 minutes. Now I'm just gonna introduce you to the ice cream that I use. This is the only ice cream that I eat and it's called Budja Budja and the reason why I buy this is because it's organic and it only uses whole food plant-based ingredients. So there you have it, your Eats for Eczema approved sticky toffee pudding and ice cream. This is my favorite dessert, like I said. You know I'm all about the presentation so I've added it to a chopping board just to make it look pretty and I've also used the remainder of the sauce just to add to the top basically. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe and I'll see you guys in the next series.